So I'm going to hit you with a bunch of vocab and words, and then we'll kind of break it down as we go through notes, all right? Let's see here. Okay. We've kind of informally talked about rays, but now it's finally get some definitions down. A ray is just part of a line. So how it's different than a segment in a line is it just has one endpoint, so it starts, and it goes on for forever and never, never, never in one direction. So not in both directions, just in one. So do you guys see your array right here? You always name it by with a starting point. So like I call it M. And then any other point that you see on that ray. So what's another point you guys see? O. Oh, so that's one. And then to make it different than like a line or a segment, you have to put a little ray on top. Because otherwise it could be, like I said, a line or a segment. So put a little ray on top. Can you guys think of a different way to name that same ray? MP. MP, yep. Those are both really good options for that ray right there. So make sure you always start with the starting um, point. Okay? okay, now opposite rays have the same starting point and then they jut out opposite ways. Okay? So we call those opposite rays. And they're actually collinear because they really make a line, don't they? They're the same starting point and then just continue on in opposite directions. So those three points are actually collinear. So do you guys see a pair of opposite rays in our picture? See a pair? <clears throat> I started at J, right? I can either go to the left or to the right. Yep. So I could have ray J H or ray what? J R. K. Yeah, K. Yep. Those two, they both start at J but go in opposite directions. So those are opposite rays. Apologies, everybody. It's kind of blurry. Okay, now that we have some formal definitions of array, we can finally talk about an angle. So an angle is actually just two rays that have the same starting point but are not collinear, okay? So they make an angle like you guys see right here. The rays are actually called the sides of our angle. The, part, um, the point that they both start at is called the vertex. We have a few different ways we can name a ray. Um, we always use capital letters. And the middle letter, um, when you use three letters to name it, always has to be the vertex. And you'll see why in just a second. And if you had a picture like this where there's only one angle pictured, you can just use the vertex to name it. But I know there's a lot of information there, but we'll kind of break it down as we go through here, OK? So if we look at this angle, there's actually four different ways to name just this singular angle right here. Let's start with the easier ones. If there's a number in here, like this, you guys have the numbers inside that angle, you could just call it angle three. That's one way to name it. Angle three. Can we all agree there's only one angle coming from X? Yep. So you'll see how it would look different if there's multiple. So you could just call it angle X. That's its vertex, that turning point of your angle. But if there are multiple angles coming from X, you actually have to trace it out with like your finger or your eyes. And then whatever letters you hit is how you would name it. So like, let's say I started right here. If I started at Y, went down to my vertex of X, what letter would I come across over here? Yeah. So you would just call it angle Y, X, Z. That's one way to name it. Or we could go the opposite way. You could call it angle Z, X, Y. Will you guys make sure you get all four of those down just so you guys can see how we could name it all four ways? I have a lot of information.
If you have an angle on a plane, it divides it into two distinct parts. Um, can we agree that we have two shades of blue here, right? Um, do you guys see our angle M, M, P? Do you guys see this angle? This dark blue part we call the interior. It's on the inside of our angle, whereas that lighter blue part's on the outside, the exterior. So let's see if we can fill in those blanks together, all right? It says points Q, M, and N lie blank the angle. What do you guys think? Hello. Hello. On. Aren't they on our angle, right? Oh, so it would be on. Yep, those points are actually on our physical angle. Yep, that was kind of a tricky one. Okay, what about points S and R? Above, or we would say the inside, interior. Yep, the inside. Yep, perfect. And then points P and O, what do you guys think? Exterior. On the outside, yep, exterior. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can name some of these things now that we've kind of talked about all the pieces of an angle. So it says, which angles have a vertex at B? So remember, B is that turning point of your angle. So if I find B, I want to find all the different angles that have B as a vertex. And there are actually four of them. Can you guys name some? What'd you say? I need three letters if I'm going to use letters to name that angle. <laughs> GD. Yep. Okay, let's do it easier. Let's use the numbers if we can, and then we can go from there. Five, six, seven. Do we all agree that all of those have B as a vertex? If I were to trace it, trace out, here's angle five, here's angle six, and there's angle seven. Yep, so those are good. Those are three good answers. Angle five, angle six, angle seven, and there's one more. And we have to use letters to name this one. GBA. You guys okay with GBA? That top one? GBA. Perfect. Okay, find angle five, and we want to list the sides of angle five. Now remember, the sides are just rays, right? So how would I name these rays coming from angle five? Uh, yep, ray BE would be this one. And ray what? G. Yeah, B G. Yep, you gotta start with B though, because that's your starting point. B G. Yep. Perfect. What's another name for angle six? So if we trace it out, here's my angle six. Yeah. You're close. E, B, D. Yeah, if you trace out E, B is your vertex, D. That's one way. There's a few other ways, but that one works. E, B, D. And what points are on the exterior of angle A, E, D? If I trace out angle AED, it's this guy right there. What's on the exterior? F and G, are those on the outside? They sure are. Points F and G. Perfect. Flip it over when you're ready. Hopefully these words um, you've heard before, um, we can classify angles based on what their degree measure is. Um, if something's exactly 90 degrees, what do we call it? Right. Perfect. What do you look for in a picture if it's right? Yeah, do you guys maybe want to circle that, that guy right there? That's what I would look for. That's how you know it's right. This guy right there. 
Okay, this blue angle is it's telling us it's less than 90. What's less than 90? Acute. Perfect. And then if it's bigger than 90? Awesome. Now we're going to practice classifying these angles as right, acute, or obtuse. So let's just trace them out. Angle A, F, B. Acute. Yeah, it's acute. Perfect. What about C, F, A? Right. C. Right. Yeah, how do we know? How do we know it's not like 91 degrees or 89 degrees? Because because the whole thing equals out to be 180, so if one side's 90, the other has to be 2. Yeah, these guys are collinear, so we know it's 180. That angle right there is 90, so what's 180 minus 90? 90, so we know it's right. But you can only assume that if it's drawn on your picture, okay, folks? If not, you can't assume anything. A, F, D, what do you guys think? Obtuse. Perfect. And then our last one, let's see here. A, F, E. Straight line. A twos only goes up right until 180. Does anyone know what a straight line angle is called? It's just a straight angle. That's what it's called. Straight. Straight angles are 180. That's kind of a trick question. We even have that in our notes. It's straight. Equals 180 degrees. Who can remind me what congruent means? The same. So if we have congruent angles, what must be the same? Degrees. Their measure. Their measures are the same. So kind of like how we had um, tick marks on a segment to tell us that they were the same. For angles, there are these little arc marks. Do you guys see how we have like one arc mark, one arc mark? That's telling me angle ABC is the same as DEF. Or like two arcy marks go with those two arcy marks. The arcs are telling us that they're the same. So when you're talking about the measure of an angle, we put that M in front. So you can say the measure of angle ABC is equal to the measure of angle DEF. So that's if you're saying like 65 is equal to 65 degrees. But if you want to say that physical angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF, you'd use the congruent symbol. Just kind of a notation thing. Do you guys remember what a bisector is? Bisector. It cuts something in half, right? So an angle bisector is a ray that makes two congruent angles. So if we look at our example here, what's our big angle in this picture? XYZ. So if angle XYZ is being bisected, what's cutting it in half? So it's a ray. How would you name a ray? YW, beautiful then it makes those two equal angles. So just remember, any kind of bisector is splitting something into two equal pieces, no matter what the context of your problem is. Like, if a surgeon bisects someone's brain, it means he cuts into two equal parts. That's what it means. If I'm bisecting a segment, I'm cutting into two equal parts. I'm bisecting an angle, two equal parts. Bisect means to cut in half. Okay, we're going to finish with a little algebra, everyone's favorite. We love algebra. So if we read the instructions here, there's kind of a lot, so let's just break it down as we go, okay? It says um, ray JK and ray KM are opposite rays. Why is that important to us? What is that telling us? Yeah, they're just telling us that this is a straight line, okay? That's what that means, okay? And then it tells us KN, this guy right here, is bisecting angle JKL. So what does that mean? It's cutting it in half. It's cutting it in half. So if I were you, 
if I, or even if I was me, I would mark that on my picture. So I'm going to put an archy mark here and an archy mark here. So now I know those two angles have the same degree or they're equal to each other. Because that's what the instructions told me. And that makes your life a lot easier when you're solving these problems. Okay, let's try the first example. It says, if the measured angle JKN is 8x minus 13, I'm going to put that in my picture, and the measured angle NKL is 6x plus 11, we want to find the value of angle JKN. So our end goal is looking for an angle measure, but before we can even find an angle measure, what do we need to find first? X. What do I know about these two expressions? How do we know they're equal? Yeah, they we told us, right, that it was being cut in half, so I know this guy has to be equal to that. I don't know what they are yet, but I know they're equal. So that's the equation we can write. And I know you guys can solve that. Bring your x to one side, constants to the other. You should get yeah, a nice whole number on this. Are you guys okay with 12? Okay, now is 12 our answer? No, because no, what we want to find JKN. Well, I know JKN is 8x minus 13. Plug it back in. Can you guys crunch that out and tell me what we should get? 83. Very good, 83 degrees. Okay, one more. Let's label our picture. JKL, so the big angle, so I'm gonna go like this, I know it's from there to there, is 9y plus 15. And let's see, JKN is 5y plus 2, JKN. Hmm, so it's a bit different. Anyone have an idea how we can equate those two expressions? Bless you. Well, you want to subtract, we could. So the thought right there was, I can take this and subtract that. We could, but then what would we equal it to? Two negatives. Two negatives, yeah, maybe. Do we know the relationship between this angle here and the big one? What's the relationship between this angle and that bigger one? It's half, right? So I know two of these have to fit into here, right? So can't I just double this and set it equal to this guy? I'm going to write 9y plus 15 equals 2 times that whole quantity. 10y. Can you guys distribute and then work your way through that equation? <coughs> Bless you. You guys getting 11 for Y? Uh-huh. Okay, but now you got to remember to plug back in for JKL. Plug back in. I don't really remember what that's supposed to be. 114? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you.